point. Can you still see my uh, screen? The screen that I am sharing, okay. So, TSO Cafe, or we can call it uh, TSO Webinars. It is a series of uh, webinars which I try to initiate and help you, the teachers of English and the English major students who are studying as colleges and university here in Vietnam, we will have a kind of like very practical professional development. And uh, we are going to organize every program in our uh, series based on the, the following uh, characteristics. First, we would like to have very practical things here. We are not talking much about the theoretical framework. We are not going to talk much about research. Although research has a very strong foundation for all the practical things to be built upon. But like, we are going to be very practical and I'm sure that the contents of all the following the future webinars will remain practical. Next is I would like to have a very continuing series of TESOL webinars. I'm trying to contact more experts in the field, talking to them, persuade them to join with us freely. So uh, that's my intention. I'm attempting to do that. The last one is we are going to ask you to do a lot of surveys because we want our webinars to be needs based, which means we create the content based on your needs. So please uh, have your voice. Tell us something about what you need so that we can try to create more and more useful uh, webinars in the future for you. Ah, that's it. There of our so cafe our webinars now let's talk about the uh, topic of today our topic is demystifying IELTS what you really need to know about the test and all of us know that IELTS is hard IELTS is expensive and IELTS is most of us think IELTS is not fair these are the things that might be wiped out by today's presentation. And I hope that uh, you can take a very uh, easy way of preparing yourself for the IELTS. Last, the three points that I have listed above are all myths. But the last statement, it is truth. We all need IELTS for our professional purposes. So uh, please, uh, I will uh, talk no more about this because the presenter will, will do it very shortly. I am going to introduce him to you. By the way, today we have Mr. Đỗ Nguyễn Đăng Khoa. He is currently a lecturer at the National College of Education in Ho Chi Minh City, and he is also the Deputy Academic Manager as um, Victor, an IELTS Center in Vietnam. Now, his main interest are uh, IELTS computer-assisted language teaching, academic writing, and curriculum design. Uh, Hoa has also been a uh, presenter at some TESO conferences. Uh, for example, he has he presented at Vic Tiso in 2008 and Cam Tiso in 2009 and at the very beginning of this uh, year, just during the third holiday, he also presented at Lao Tiso. So uh, everyone, we are going to have our uh, the Hua Wizard. Hua, please uh, share your screen and talk to us. Okay, thank you. Thank Thank you very much, Mr. Wu, for a very uh, uh, informative introduction. And thank you for inviting me to the presentation today. OK, so everybody, can you hear me? If you can hear me clearly, please type in yes, if you can hear me clearly. OK, yes, yes, OK, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I have seen a lot of yes here. Please uh, 
do not hesitate to type in no if you cannot hear me. Okay. Uh, now, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, everybody say yes. So now let's get started. Uh, as far as you may have already concerned, uh, the presentation today is about IELTS. And before starting the, uh, the conversation, now let's get started with a little bit of introduction, but Mr. Wo is already making this. So I'm gonna skip it. Okay. Now, uh, let's get started. Um, Okay, so uh, as we may have already been knowing about, uh, the IELTS test is conducted and owned by three different organizations. We have Cambridge Assessment English, IDP, and BC. Uh, and one of the purposes of IELTS is to immigrate to the countries where English is the native language. And it is the case of the general training module and another purpose that this is for those who want to study in countries where English is the native language, as in the academic module. And in some cases, as far as I have been informed, some of you are uh, teachers of uh, primary school, high school. So you may be required to take the IELTS for some specific requirement, requirements from the uh, uh, you know, the, the school or the organization, the institutions that you are working with. Uh, I have seen people typing in a lot. Okay. It's all about yes and yes. Okay, so the fee that you are supposed to be paying is right now currently 4,750,000 Vietnam down. And that could be four million and a half in some BC or IDP partners. As in the case of my working place, uh, we charge you only 4.5 million for uh, the fees. And as you, you can see that it's quite expensive, right? So some of you uh, who are students may find the fee a daunting task when it comes to you know, paying. And some of you may have to spend a little bit less and save a little bit more for for the money to pay for the, the fee and the required documents would be your id card or your passport and the validity it should be around two years okay so uh, uh, let's have a uh, quick check i now type in yes if you already know all of the information that i have just uh, uh, in informed to you not typing yes if you know already all of the things that i told you okay good right uh yeah those uh feedback is very uh useful for future conferences when uh, mr Vo and if i happen to be invited again yeah be able to adjust my contents of presentation to something more useful Good, thank you. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, contents of the, the test structures. And I think uh, some of you have already been informed about that. We have one listening test, which would last for around 40 minutes. An academic writing, which lasts for around 60, sorry, acad academic reading, which lasts for about 60 minutes. An academic writing, for 60 minutes and there would be one speaking section would last for around 11 to 14 and that could be either conducted on the same day that you take the written test or it can be taken in a separate day of the um, written test. Okay, so if you have any questions when during the presentation or yeah, if you have any queries, if you have any question right now, you may want to type in questions. And then, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Vo, can you, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm here. I'm uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Vo will uh, have 
like um, collecting all the questions and we okay, will try to that. answer all of them. Yeah, we we'll try so to everyone, answer all of them. Everyone, if you have any question, please send it to me via your chat. I am going to uh, have uh, Mr. Hua to address all of your questions at uh, the end of our presentation. So please don't hesitate to uh, type your questions into the chat box. Yeah. The first questions uh, that you may be thinking of is about whether to take the IELTS or to take some other kinds of tests like V-STEPS or FCE. Uh, you know, uh, if you are working as uh, teachers of English language in primary school or high school, uh, there has been a certain urge for, or certain demands for a new, your, to have your certificate renewed and some of you may think about taking the IELTS or the FCE, or nowadays we call this B2 first, or the VSTAP as a basic uh, evidence of your English language proficiency. Now let's spend some time to take a look at all of the free certificates here. Okay, so I have made a brief comparison chart comparison table of all of the three tests here. We have the IELTS, the B2 first, or previously called the FCE and the VSTEP. Um, if you spend some time to read the table, you may have noticed that there are different strange of different tests. For example, when it comes to pricing or fees, everybody can see that the FCE is arguably the cheapest one with only 1 million and 400. Uh, this information was taken from the page of the uh, um, Department of uh, Education and Training Ho Chi Minh City. So maybe in your places, the price might be slightly different. So if, if you think that the price is different, please type in your, your the, the price that you have been uh, knowing, okay? For example, if you come from Hue or Hanoi, you may want to see the prices a little bit differently. Okay. And when it comes to the duration, surprisingly, the IELTS is the shortest test, which lasts for only two hours and 45 minutes. So when it comes to, you know, time pressure, for those who really cannot deal well with time, two minutes, and two hours and 45 minutes might be a little bit hard. But for those of you who want to uh, go home early, I think it's a very nice choice. And not many of you want to take a very long test, didn't you? And for the popularity, IELTS is arguably one of the most popular test in the world. And from my experience, it is much popular compared to the B2 first or the VSTEP. Um, yeah, when it comes to the validity, the IELTS would last for two years while the, uh, while the other tests are no, there were no restrictions on the validity. Okay, I have seen a question here. Uh, why is it IELTS Validity is two years and the B2 and B stuff forever. I, I, I really can't really, you know, understand the, uh, like the principles behind the way they do it. But as we already have been informed uh, on the website, there would be no expiry dates, you know, expiry dates for B2 first and B stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, there could be no expiry dates for B2 first and B step uh, because uh, the, the policy is that you may, when you apply for an organization using your English certificate, the recruiter, the employers may view the date that you took the test and consider for themselves 
whether your English levels are uh, okay enough to, so that they can accept you to work in the company. So that's one of the principles behind the B2, uh, the reasons why B2 first and B step are no longer restricted to any uh, kinds of expiry dates. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Hua. Okay. And everyone, I would like to add a piece of information which I has just very quickly uh, asked somebody else. And this is just a little bit of um, like add on into this uh, about the validity of the three tests. Now for V-step, this is uh, like, it is mostly considered a very um, locally recognized test within the border of a uh, Vietnamese educational context. Uh, mm -hmm. Test being designed for Vietnamese teacher, like uh, cannot afford or IELTS or B2 first or any other kinds of international standardized test. And like uh, for me and like what I have read already, the B2 or the FC, it is mostly not for the academic context, which uh, IELTS is. And um, also there is a strong belief in uh, linguistics, uh, between linguistics that, okay, uh, you cannot be like forever good in a language, which is mm. your mother tongue. So there is an ongoing argument between whether we should like uh, to uh, return the validity of the IELTS for two years and why the other forever is mostly based on the assumptions of the the test owners. So um, yeah. there is not much scientific evidence behind the validity. You just uh, choose the one that fits you best. That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that adds into one of the very, you know, um, discussion that we have here regarding the which test is better? Of course, I'm not going to be giving any conclusions on whether the IELTS is better than the other two. But from my own experience, the IELTS is arguably one of the uh, one of the easier one when it comes to listening. If you have taken the B2 first or if you have done any practice test on uh, FCE before, the listening has although they give you the the, the uh, they give you the permission to listen to the recording twice it is still a very difficult uh, listening recording test uh, compared to the IELTS so uh, yeah for and there's another another problem the IELTS is very popular in Vietnam and it highlights the need for materials for example, we have around Cambridge, number one to 14, and that's a very huge amount of materials that you can revise upon. But when it comes to the B2 and the V-step, there could be no more than around 20 or 30 books written about the B2 or V-step. So think wisely before you choose the test. You know, it would be around like 100 or 1,000 books about IELTS, but not many for B2 and V-step. Okay. Mm, so uh, we have a question from Miss Mel. Uh, actually, the IELTS is not really for linguistic or, yeah, it is not specifically designed for linguistic. It is designed for those, you know, uh, I'm going to clarify it a little bit. We have two modules in the IELTS test. You can either choose the academic module or you can you may want to choose the general training one for the general training the purpose of the test would be all about immigrations or um, english for um you know everyday conversation and for the academic module it is for your preparation to study in a new environment where the English is the non sorry where the, where English is the native language. 
the contents of the two modules are very different when it comes to reading and writing. They are the same for listening and speaking. You will do the same thing. You will listen to four sections in both modules, but when it comes to reading, uh, the academic text is longer than that. And in general training, you have to do four different short sections, okay? And in the academic writing, for the first task, you are supposed to write a report, your know, report. Mm -hmm. And for the uh, first part of the general training module, you are supposed to write a letter, okay? Uh, so now I, I need to get one more survey. So uh, I have been informed that there are foreigners in our conversation, in our webinar. So if you are a non-native Vietnamese speaker or if you are not Vietnamese, please, uh, you know, type in yes, if you are not Vietnamese. Okay, now please type in yes, if you are not Vietnamese. Okay, so Miss uh, Mel, you are not Vietnamese, so we have two people who are not Vietnamese here. Okay, that is one of the reasons explaining why um, the language of presentation now is in English. Okay, so am I make it, making it clear to you about the differences between uh, the academic module and the general training module? Okay, thank you. Now, uh, another myth that you that may have arise when it comes to BC or IDP could be a very mm, yeah big discussion on the internet. So now let's have a quick uh, poll. If you like BC more, or if you have better experience with BC, or if you have any kinds of preferences that are unexplained, please type in BC, and otherwise. If you like IDP, please type in IDP, okay? Now, let's get started. Choose the center that you feel you want to take the test in, in your upcoming uh, IELTS. We have one IDP. Oh. Oh, interesting. Um, Mr. Vo, can, can you start a, a poem um, for this question? Oh, I, I think I, I I don't know how to start a poem. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the. Uh... Mm, I think uh, starting up now would require me to cite out of the current view of my. Seriously. Sign up into my account on the Zoom's website. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, this might be a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit like okay. I, I see a similar like it's very balanced, you know. M maybe half of us prefer BC and the other half prefer IDP. You can see it's a fifty-fifty percent poll, right? It would be much better if I can see the definite result. <laughs> it's like a very fun game, you know? Yeah, right now, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Okay. It's okay. So um, now from my experience, I have taken the IELTS five times. Uh, I took around three times in BC and another two in, I another two in IDP. My very first IELTS test was in IDP because of some of the rumors saying that IDP examiners in speakings are better. Have you been informed, oh, sorry, are easier, are more easy going. Have you been informed uh, about this um, information before? Yeah, some of you might have. Uh, yeah, back when, back in 2015, when I first took my IELTS test, some of my friends told me that IDP examiners in speaking would be much, much more easy going. And yeah, eventually I took the test and uh, I got not a very high score compared to what you are expecting from an IS teacher back then when I was a student. I got only seven in speaking when I took, in, when I took the test in the IDP. See, 
but like uh, one or two years later, I returned to the test and I did have obviously zero preparation because I was a little bit busy and I needed the, the, the certificate for you know, my renewal to apply for a new job. I retook the test and this time with British Council and I got higher than that. I got around 7.5 in speaking. See, so I think the difference in the levels of easygoingness between the two uh, um, examiners in British Council and IDP are very minimal. Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Miss. Um, yeah, PVC PP for counting the pawns. We have five for BC and eight for IDP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and my writing, my writing score is very consistent. It will be around seven point five and eight. So uh, there could be no, absolutely zero difference between the way they uh, mark your essays or they mark your speaking performance. Uh, some of my friends told me that uh, I, I have contacts with examiners and they told me that um, the examiners for British Council yesterday might be the examiner for IDP tomorrow. So they are basically the same. Do not worry about the examiner, okay? And when it comes to the um, test values, I have a slight reference towards British Council because, you know, as a matter of fact, I took there more times than in IDP and I prefer the environment. I prefer the way they organize the test. But I think that is all about personal preferences. All of the tests that you are going to take in the future will be much better than your national high school exam. So yeah, do not worry much about the, the quality of the uh, venues or like something like that. Okay, now let's come to a very interesting question, the paper-based or a computer-based test. Now, let's have another quick uh, survey. Uh, if you are going to take the IELTS or if you have any intentions of taking the IELTS in the very far future, now typing paper-based or computer-based, the kinds of tests that you want to take. I think you can just type uh, P for paper-based and C for computer-based. That will right. save you a lot of time. Okay. So I'm everyone, just tying. P, P, C, P. Oh, a lot of P. <laughs> for a low tech person like me, computer based. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have seen a lot of paper based um, references and a very, very little uh, options for computer based tests. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, starting from 2018, there is a very totally new kind, new format of IELTS. We call it the CDI or the Computer Delivered Test. Uh, this has beginning to gain in popularity in recent uh, months. And I'm going to show you some of the uh, advantages of the IELTS Computer Delivered Test compared to, uh, you know, the written one. You know, uh, I, uh, initially I heard that there could be uh, all a few Vietnamese, but um, so that's one of the reasons why I, I made a Vietnamese um, PowerPoint. I'm gonna explain it to you. Uh, one of the big advantage of the computer deliver test would be the fact that you will get your result five, within only five or seven days compared to the paper test, which will take you like 13 days for the results. And that could be very useful for those who want to have the results quick for their application uh, to whatever organization they are applying for. And, you know, for the computer de delivered test, all of the test takers account for only around 25 people in the same test taking room compared to like a hundred of them in the paper based test. So all of the 
registration registrations process could be minimal. You don't have to spend a lot of time waiting for waiting in line for people queuing for uh, take be, their photos being taken or their uh, ID being verified. So you will be able to go home at 11 rather than 12 if you take the paper pay test. See, and that that one of the reasons why I the my last three IELTS tests I I took the computer deliver one. And for the writing test, you are able to use the amazing tone of copy and paste. And that will definitely boost up your you know, writing power. You can type a lot of words, much more words compared to written one. See, imagine having an error in a paper pay test and you have to erase everything in a very messy manner and then input another thing when you are very hurry for the time pressure. So that is one of the perks of the writing, the, the writing, the written test taken on the computer. Mm -hmm. And there's also a word count function, which will tell you how many words have you been typing in. And that could be another huge, another huge advantage of the computer deliver test. Uh, and to me, uh, some of you may complain that you are not familiar with reading on computer screens, but I, to me, it is, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's a very interesting question. Can we use such features like Control F in some, uh, on, the, on, on the keyboard in the reading test? And the answer is no, you cannot search for anything. If there is a uh, search features in the reading test, everybody could do it anyway. See, we don't have to schema scan anything. But one of the very amazing thing of the reading test is that you are allowed to copy and paste. For example, when it comes to a very uh, difficult names like uh, Dr. Wallowitz or something, you may think about copying that name from the text and paste it onto your answer sheet, answer sheets, and that could be um, say that for those who might have a problem with spellings, see? And um, I don't really see any uh, disadvantages of computer deliver test other than the fact that if you are not familiar with computers or I say if you are not so, um, if you are not working with computers and typing a lot, you may feel it a little bit slow to type in your answers. And there would be another problems with the listening. Um, because it, the listening would be the first test in the series of four. So uh, when you first see the computer screen, you may get some kinds of fear that you will accidentally click on something that you shouldn't be clicking on. So yeah, I don't really like the listening in the computer deliver test. Yes, we can underline keywords. There is a function of highlighting keywords uh, with uh, different markers, I believe. There's a vir virtual marker that allows you to highlight the keywords in the reading text. So don't worry about that. Everything uh, is perfect. Yeah, hello. Uh, there is also another question that I think you should also address. Uh, listening, can we throw the listening test and read questions in advance uh, by uh, Ms. Su? Yeah. Okay, so that's a very interesting question. Uh, the answer is yes, amazingly. We can uh, switch forward to the next part of the listening test if you want to read the question in advance. And there could be no restriction. You can do whatever you like with the computer. For example, when you reach the end of section one, there could be around uh, 30 seconds for you to check your answer, but you can take advantage of that 30 seconds to read the question for section two or three or four, and you can easily switch between the sections. There could be no thing like uh, you must uh, complete section one first and then the section two must be available to you later. Yeah. So the answer is yes, you can read the questions in advance. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so any other question regarding the computer deliver test? <laughs> of course not. You are not able to listen to the test again. Right. I will pay like 10 million if I am able to listen to the test again. Okay, any other questions? Yes, of course. If we if you choose uh, an inaccurate option, you may want to yeah input in another answer. It's okay. Yeah, you you can just uh, uh, correct uh, your you can just uh, change your answers at every single part of the test. For example, if you are in the middle of section one, you are still allowed to. Uh, adjust your answers in section four is okay. Because of, I think because of the time limit, I'm gonna move on to the uh, next slides. Uh, okay, so uh, Miss Holm has a very interesting question and I will leave that question at the Q and A part because it needs time to explain, okay? Nah, next. Okay, now let's come to the learning strategies. Mm. So now another question. Now please type in yes if you are going to self-study for the IELTS. And type in no if you are going to be uh, um, attending uh, an IELTS center. Okay, now type in yes for self-study and no for IELTS center. Oh, a lot of yes. We have a very uh, big groups of learning autonomy here. Everybody say yes. Oh, you like self-study that much? Wow. Zero, no? Okay. I think I'm, uh, I will felt at the PR marketing uh, strategy for my center anyway. Everybody say, say yes. Okay, now another question. <laughs> you don't believe in the sensors. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, another another um, interesting question. Now, do you find self-learning IELTS easy or hard? Please type easy if you think it's easy and type hard if you think it's hard. Okay, easy or hard. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody wants to self-study and all of you say it's not easy. Okay, so now here comes some guidelines. Here comes some guidelines that you may take advantage of in your process of learning IELTS. And I call it CBA, the three steps, the three stages that you may want to follow when you learn IELTS either at home or at an English center. Okay, so we have the first one is choose. The second one is belief and the final one is advanced. Okay, now I'm gonna explain the three keywords here. The first one is choose. Okay, so um, like the question I have just asked you, there are two things that we are supposed to choose, uh, materials for learning IELTS or the teachers that you want to follow. You may want to pick one of them or both of them. You can combine learning with teachers at centers or uh, using materials or both of them in your process of learning IELTS. Okay, now I'm gonna give you some uh, um, comments on how to choose good materials. Now I'm gonna make, I have made a material checklist. Um, before starting to learn anything, before starting to choose materials, use the checklist to uh, verify whether your materials are at your levels. Is it too hard or too easy? You know, some of the uh, writing samples that uh, I have read on the internet, they are at a very, very, you know, high levels of 
language competence. Like some of them are even like in, in invisible band's hands. Yeah, some of the vocabulary are completely unnecessary for your levels. For example, if you are a learner who need only 5.5, it is not worth reading any kinds of uh, like band nine or like band 10 essays like that. Now, the second uh, thing that you should take into account is whether your materials are published by Cambridge or any certi certified publishers. And some of you may have been informed that in some cases, we have to use materials that are not published by Cambridge. And when it comes to that question, think about whether your materials are written by IELTS test writers or examiners. And in my case, uh, you may want to search for how to do IELTS.com. Okay, I'm gonna type in for you. Uh, you know, how to, to do IELTS.com. It is a website launched by an examiner. His name is David Lang. If you are familiar with IELTS learning group, you have you will see him uh, commenting around in many, many big IELTS groups. And we have uh, IELTS Weekly with Pauline Cullen. Uh, Pollen Cullen is. Uh, uh, hello, can, can you still see my uh, PowerPoint? Now, please type in yes if you still see my PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Miss Pollen Cullen is the test writer. She is the author of the IELTS, the Cambridge IELTS 9, and she is also the author of. Uh, the official guide to IELTS, vocabulary for IELTS, grammar for IELTS, and different official materials. So the two people here are very, you know, willing to answer your questions. I have uh, texted Miss Pauline Cullen many, many times, and she spent a lot of time answering my questions. Believe me, they have a lot of time to spare when it comes to uh, solving your problems in IELTS. Okay, yeah. So uh, think about materials or anything that are written by IELTS test takers, sorry, IELTS writers or IELTS examiners. And finally, if your materials are not from the top three things that I have listed in the checklist, think about whether it is recognized by a lot of former test takers as effective, um, you know, I heard about I heard a lot of good feedbacks from materials written by Mr. Mr. Din Tang. You know, if you have heard about him, he has been doing a very amazing job in making the uh, boost for boost your vocabulary for IELTS, in which uh, he highlights all of the good lexical items that you are supposed to learn in the reading from Cam Cambridge IS 1 to 14. And I think that is one of the um, materials that I would recommend. Okay. So uh, now for materials for reading and listening, for those of you who want to take, who want to, who have the very long duration of learning, for example, you still have like a year ahead of your test. You can think about using the materials that are topic focused, like unit by unit, you will learn it every day. But for those of you who are pressed for time, like you still have, you only have like two months or one month ahead of your test. Now think about choosing your material that is test, test type focused. And that could be a useful materials for those of you who want to who are already very proficient at language and want to just f be familiar with the, the question of the test. Uh, on the screen, I have been showing you the four books that I myself use for my reading and listening. Do you know all of them? Now type in the number of materials that you have been using. 
among the four. One, two, three, four. Just okay. I'm saying, I'm saying four. Two, good. One, two. Really strange. Except the last one. Yeah, the last one, the complete guide to the IELTS is the most amazing, elaborately de written. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you it. I'm going to show it to you later if I have enough time. And because of the, you know, the problems of uh, copyright, um, I'm not going to share you the link right now. You may want to look for it elsewhere in the uh, bookshops or, yeah. In some other ways that I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, suggest. It's a secret, everyone. <laughs> of secret. course, we all, yeah, we all know how, how we are going to do after the presentation. You are not going to the bookstore, aren't you? <laughs> okay, it's for the speaking. Um, uh, Quan, there is a, a question. There is a question. A question. Would you would like to answer. Yeah, the the last one is not from Cambridge. It's from. Uh, a national geographic learning it's engage and it also integrate videos if you are an ias teacher and you want to make your ias lesson more interesting you may want to buy a copy of it and use the dvd version there's the videos in, and, uh, in the, yeah. the, the, the final one. bruce rogers he is very famous <laughs> Yeah, very famous in designing, in designing uh, like uh, books for exams all around the world. He is famous for IELTS preparation materials, and he also very mm -hmm. famous for IELTS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And that, that question is very interesting. The last book on Go, not coming from Cambridge, is very standardized. All of the questions are very standardized, so you may have no worries using it. Okay. Now, for speaking, uh, to be honest, I do not use a lot of materials for speaking. I, I find all of the IELTS speaking books in the market not satisfying for my own learning needs. So of, all of the time I use Oxford word skills, which may enhance my use of idioms and phrasal verbs. I use some of them in my speaking, and you may want to see uh, the three different levels of uh, Oxford word skills um, on the screen. And the site that I often use for my own IELTS learnings and my IELTS teaching as well is the IELTSspeaking.co.uk. Okay. Now, for writing. Okay, so for writing, uh, if you are a beginner or if you just start learning IELTS and you want some familiarity with the test, think about reading IELTS Simon sites or any mater materials that are written by Simon. It is not the best, but it is the easiest to follow one. Uh, I took the test in 2015 and yeah, I did learn a lot from Simon. It's very easy to use uh, structures in writing. It's very easy to follow vocab. Uh, that may help you to uh, get some uh, familiarity with the test. But for later stages, when you want to advance in your learning, think about using the three materials that I have been showing you here. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, the first one is actually free. I'm gonna send you the link later. It is from uh, an IELTS teacher in uh, Arabia or something. He got a Ben Knight in IELTS. Um, I think his material is well designed and it is completely free. So I can send you the first, uh, the first book later. And then we have the IELTS writing for success. Uh, I bought it uh, in the bookstore. I think it is not yet available on the internet. So you may want to spend around 300,000 for the IELTS writing for success. Quite expensive for students, but I think it's worth it. And then how to do IELTS, as I have already in, introduced to you, was written, was uh, designed by a former IELTS examiner. 
Okay. Now, this is the materials for practice test. And on the screen, you have been showed one of the most standardized practice tests. And please do not waste your test. Uh, there are several um, people, several learners who do a lot of tests. Like uh, I promised myself that I will do like around four tests per day. And at the end of the first month of learning, you, you end up doing all of the tests. And I think that is not a wise strategy. The tests are not designed to level up your language, learn your language competency. So please do not waste your test. My advice is to do only two or three tests per week to check whether you have any new improvements in your language competency. Do not do all of them. Do not waste the test, okay? Now, this is the checklist for teacher. Uh, alternatively, if you do not want to self-study and you need a teacher, now ask yourself the questions. Do the teachers have an IELTS of at least 7.5? Do they have at least two year experience in teaching IELTS? And more importantly, do they understand the band descriptors? Now, please type in yes if you know what the band descriptor is and no if you don't know about that. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. No. Okay. I'm glad you say no because I have something to, you know, explain. Yeah, we have around two no and a lot of yes. No, yes. Okay. You know the band descriptors are the 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 documents that um, BC and IDP and Cambridge Language Assessment make public to you on the internet. Uh, okay, I'm going to share it. But although they are public, not many of them are able to explain it. Wait, 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 wait. Um, sorry for the uh, waiting. Share, share. Okay, now can you see the band descriptor? I'm sharing you the band descriptor of Brain Test 2. Okay, so you have read it before. I, 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 I believe you, some of you have read this band descriptor before, but not many of you are able to explain, to understand actually the exact wording of the band descriptor. For example, uh, for band seven in test achievement, they require you to present a clear position. But what is a clear position? Okay, how the examiner can actually know whether your IELTS writing essay is clear or not? Do you provide a clear position or not? So if you want to choose a teacher, try to choose the who can explain the band descriptors. Okay. For example, if you do a kind of uh, placement test, you know, placement test. In some uh, centers, they, you may want to meet the uh, teachers, the, the person who tests you in person, and you may want to ask them some questions about the band descriptor to check whether they know anything about that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to market my own center. Don't worry. And one of the very important thing in the teacher checklist is whether the teachers have a lot of time to correct your essay. Okay. Yeah, although they are very, very excellent at delivering lessons, they, are, they give a very excellent understanding of the band descriptor, but it would be useless if they cannot correct your essays like once a week, at least once a week, okay? So think about 
the teachers who are able to have some time to correct your essays or practice speaking with you. Okay. Yeah, because I think the time, because of the time limits, I'm gonna skip the class checklist beside the, the final one. If you want to choose a center, think about whether they provide you with enough guided learning hours. Now, what is the guided learning hours? Hmm. According to uh, uh, Cambridge English Support Site, it takes around 200 guided learning hours for a language learner to progress from one level to another level. For example, if you are in uh, around band three or band four right now, for example, band four, you need to spend 200 guided learning hours to progress to a band 5.5, something like that, okay? So this is the sample that I took from the websites of uh, Cambridge um, support site. And they do a very brief, they do a very detailed description of the Cambridge English exam, but nothing about IELTS. So I have added in some of the equivalents to IELTS band that you may see on the right, oh, sorry, on the left, on the left column. See? Now, some of the sensor claim that you can get from zero to hero from zero to seven in one month. And let's make a quick calculation. So from zero to seven, you need around 700 learn guided learning hours. And for a month, you have only 720, uh, sorry, 720 hours for a month. So this kind of uh, learning is possible if you study for 24 over 24 without eating or sleeping, see? So that one, one of the reasons that may explain some of the very misleading advertisement that you see on the internet. Yeah, do not believe in any like from zero to seven or from zero to 6.5 in only one or two months. That is not possible, okay? Yeah, any questions so far? Yeah, no. Okay, so after you choose your materials, after you finish choosing teachers and centers, think about believing them, believing your choice and follow them to the end. Uh, I heard some of my students uh, using one material at the time and they get bored with that. They stopped learning that and decided to start the choosing process all over again. That is very time wasting. So if you have been doing the choosing section correctly, believe in that and follow all of your choices to the end and keep yourself away from distractions. Like I heard that this material is better or I heard that another teacher is better. Okay. Excuse me, Hua, uh, yeah. there is also another question. Can you clarify guided learning hour? Okay, so uh, guided learning hours are the numbers of hours that you learn with the assistant of the teacher, not self-learning, okay? The numbers of uh, learning hours that you learn with a teacher. Is it okay, Miss uh, ML? Okay. Yeah, so that excludes the amount of time you learn at home. Okay. Okay, I think we should move on. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, now the, the final the, the final step in your self-learning aisle is to advance. Now start a learning plan. Keep it 30 minutes a day. Uh, I, I think you should share your PowerPoint screen. Okay. <laughs> oh, what did you tell me? Oh, I, I, I have been talking a lot without a PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, believe and follow. Believe in your choices and follow, follow them to the end. I already told you that, right? Okay, now the final step in your um, IELTS learning strategy could be advanced. Now, after you choose and believe, start a learning plan. Keep yourself learning at least 30 minutes a day or 
3.5 hours a week. Of course, you it doesn't hurt to spend around 30 minutes a day learning English, right? And you may want to keep yourself motivated by keeping a learning journal. Now, that is one of the, the um, basic outline of a learning journal that I designed. For example, in day one, I do one reading text. Now, I have some words in my head. Do not write all of them. Only write the words that you can st still retain, you still remember in your head. And now, numbers, the correct answers that you, uh, oh, somebody is drawing on my PowerPoint. Mm. And write the numbers of correct answer that I have, that we have uh, had in your reading text. And you will be able to actually compare yourself now to you in yesterday or from yourself from the beginning of the learning process to yourself after three months learning. See, keeping a journal is a very wise strategy of uh, uh, understanding whether you have improved anything or not. Uh, excuse me why I think uh, Mr. Hugh has a question about having an example of a learning plan. Could you help uh, him with that? Uh, actually, uh, a learning plan varies uh, between uh, people. I am the kind of person who use a Google Calendar a lot. Okay, you, you can draw, but uh, actually, I, I don't think uh, it do much, uh, much help if you draw anything on my PowerPoint. You may want to start um, using Google Calendar to remind yourself of the time that you are supposed to learn. Now, think about your free time first. Use pen and paper, write all of the time that you can spare at least a day or a week. Then put reminders. For example, I want to study at 9 p.m. tomorrow because I return home at 8.30, see? And you can actually use a lot of functions from uh, reminder applications to duplicate your plan to the next day. Um, yeah, spending around, uh, it would take you around uh, 30 minutes to start doing everything on a reminding app like Google Calendar, or in your case, if you use iPhone, maybe Apple Calendar or something, I don't use iPhone, sorry. Okay, is it okay for, if you want to have more questions about learning plan, you can uh, tell me later. I'm gonna give you more advice. Okay, is it okay, Hugh? Hello, okay. I will, give, I will send everybody my own email and phone number later in case you have any more questions. Okay, now, uh, again, my learning strategies include choose, believe, and advance. And that good concludes my uh, presentations here, and I hope that you find useful. And um, you couldn't waste a lot of your time in the very early morning, Sunday morning like that. Now, any questions? Now, that's, it's time for Q&A. Okay, um, Mr. Kwa, so you, uh, uh, can you please uh, stop uh, screen sharing so that I can share my own screen? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, now, yeah, remain, please, you are going to answer a lot of difficult questions. <laughs> so, uh, the first question is um, for the Q&R part. Now, everyone, we are going to move on here. Yeah, this is my slide. So, uh, the very first question we have here from uh, our, uh, let's go back there. So, we have a, a question. Hi, Mr. Choir, in speaking and writing, do we have to discuss both sides of a problem to have a high band score? So, what do you think about this, Choir? Uh, okay, so so I think it might be a good idea if we can see the big question on the PowerPoint. So is it okay if we copy the question onto the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so that everybody can, can see it. 
because some yeah, of yeah, you yeah. may miss the questions. I'm sorry, sorry. I think I need to take some water. So uh, here is the first question. Okay. It, so in speaking and writing, do we have to discuss both sides of the problem to have a high band score? Uh, that is a very interesting question. I'm gonna address the writing uh, part first. Uh, for writing, there are different kinds of question types that require you to discuss both sides of the problem. Or in other words, you must do that in some questions. And in my case, uh, discuss both views, discuss both views, and do the advantages outweigh disadvantages. Are the two typical questions that force you, that oblige you to discuss both sides of the the question in order to have a high band score, okay? Uh, I have typed in the two types of question that you need to discuss both sides in writing. And otherwise you are free to choose the sign. For example, uh, uh, learning English with computer is uh, great. Do you, to what extent do you agree or disagree? You can choose to either 100% agreeing by saying that, yeah, learning English with computer is great. Or you can 100% totally disagree with that. Yeah, it is, it is not great at all. Or you can discuss both sides of the view. That's okay. Is it okay? Is it okay? Um, so I would like to clarify here a little bit by asking a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, do you think, why do you think that uh, an essay that addresses two sides of a problem will have a higher score than an essay that doesn't? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that is a very big question that I myself have been asking for many, many many years when not many years but like some 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 time when i i am learning and teaching is now um yeah i i think that's a very interesting question can you type a question on the computer as well now some people think that uh sitting between the lines is not a wise option like for example, if we just get two sides of the problems in Vietnamese, we say in a very balanced way, or Vietnamese we call it một cách rất là thảo mai là to discuss two sides in an essay, we whether well, we will get a high score or not, and the answer is no. Yeah, you can discuss two sides and still get very high score. One of my students got eight point five in writing. And she took a very interesting position that both sides are equally important, okay? But remember, if you want to sit between the fence or if you want to be writing a balanced essay, remember to use any word that shows that your position is equal. And one of the very useful words that I like to use is equal. Okay, can, Mr. Wo, can you help me write the, the, the phrase on the screen? The what? Uh, sorry. Uh, again, if you want to write a balanced essay, effectively think about writing whether it is equally important or in equal measure. Or in other words, you have to clarify very clearly that the two sides that you are discussing are equal. 
so that you can get a higher score in a balanced essay. Use the phrase that show that your essay is equal. Okay. Uh, question yeah, number three. three. Yeah, question number three. Yeah. Uh, in writing part, sometimes I don't have enough ideas and keep repeating the ideas. Could you give me some tips to deal with, with the questions? This is this problem, sorry. Now, one of the very big problems of writing es essays is having no ideas. Now, before starting writing, think about five things. I call it the M-E-L-S-H model. We call it money, environment, uh, lifestyle, uh, safety, and health. Now, if you have no idea to write, think about whether the problems in the question have anything to do with money, environment, lifestyle, safety, and health. And the ideas will automatically come smoothly from your brain to the essay, okay? Yeah, we have the, uh, are you with me? Are you with me? Here, just go on, please. Uh, thank you for your, right. now everybody, uh, is it okay for the clarification of the ideas brainstorming part? If you think it's okay, now typing yes, if you think uh, the, you understand the uh, brainstorming part. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, because I think that uh, that's a very interesting part that you want to to uh, yeah know. So can, can you write the model on the screen, Mr. Bo? Can you have me write it? Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, uh, like I'm editing the question. The next. <laughs> uh -huh. it's okay. So uh, let's say everyone, uh, Mr. Kwan, want me to like write for for uh, on the screen for him. Yeah, like uh, uh, the model of brainstorming, we call it M E L. -S the model of uh, brainstorming that you have just like here. I have mm -hmm. here, everyone. I'm going to show you on the screen. And Mr. Kwan will talk about this a little bit more. This is the model of brainstorming for ideas. That yeah, I, I made a uh, spelling error in health. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, think about whether your the problem, the problems that are mentioned in the question have anything to do with money, environment, lifestyle, safety, and health. Okay. So think that are the those, think about those subtopics. Yeah, everyone. Right. Yeah. Now let's move on okay. to the next question. I'm still confused about the self learning. Of course, at home. So can we learn by ourselves or we have to have a teachers with us? And if we have some materials that we can use to serve learning and maybe we don't need any support teacher, is it possible? Okay, so now I'm gonna share my own experience. Uh, back in 2015, I was very poor, to be honest. So I was financially unable to learn at any other centers. But now think about my background first. I was, I was fairly good at English and reading. I was at the levels of 6.5 before I do the test. I believe, I believe that I got around 6.5 without any preparation. And after two months learning at home, I got eight in, in the test. So self-learning is completely possible. But my, my own advice, my own experience is that you should be around six, around 5.5 to start self-learning, okay? You should be around 5.5 uh, to start doing the, the self-learning effectively. That so, is my own experience. Yeah, I would like to add uh, an idea to uh, Mr. Kwan's answer. You know, uh, sales learning, sales study requires you have some kinds of competence, you know. Uh, sales learning is not are uh, possible for learners of very low levels because you know nothing. As you mm -hmm. need to have some ability to be able to identify a good source, 
you have to be dis- self disciplined you have to organize yourself manage your time and many other things so those kinds of things are mainly the characteristic of a little bit higher learner yeah you know higher levels learners so if you are still at a very low level of uh, english competence and you want to self study that might be a little bit impossible so sorry but i think that's the truth yeah now ask yourself the question if you are able to uh, to answer the question uh, do you live in a house in a very uh, you know um, decent manner you will be able to start learning to start self learning ias if you cannot answer a basic question like do you live in a house i think uh, there should be some help with the uh, good those who have uh, higher levels and in my case teachers any advice for self improving speaking uh okay so that that is a very um brilliant question that i expect you to ask you know i am a little bit introverted you know introverted i do not talk a lot i do not spend a lot of time talking to people but i still somehow maintain a very decent level of uh, speaking fluency um do you think that we can actually start practicing speaking at home without partners is it okay is it okay to practice with our partners uh hi everyone uh, yeah. yes or no practice speaking with their uh, partners yes or no please tie into your your chat box no you need to have a partner practice with a mirror <laughs> get mirroring yes no I need a partner. Okay, so uh, uh, this, um, you know, Tison Cafe is a very nice way of finding partners. You can choose your, you can uh, make friends with others after the um, webinar and start doing some speaking practice as well. Okay, so yeah, I will not deny the importance of having a partner. It is very important you can both motivate each other if you do a practicing sections with your friends or with anybody who have the same target with you however in the worst case when you are unable to find any partner you can use technology to help you okay now the first technology that yeah you have you, you can make friends with foreigners and practice speaking um okay so i'm 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 gonna be sharing you some ideas about using technology to practice speaking uh firstly for pronunciation one of the easiest way of checking whether your pronunciation is fine is using google assistant or siri if you use iphone okay you can just randomly uh speak to the google assistant or siri to check whether they understand what you are saying yeah siri is good i i am not a fan of iphone but i'm not going to start any um or any fights with you whether to as whether iphone or android is better okay so if you want to practice learning ielts specifically think about using the apps i correct okay i'm suggesting you an app on i correct Um, this application is specifically designed for the IELTS. Uh, there are already video recorded uh, tapes that show the face of examiners, and you will be able to practice with the videos by recording yourself. Okay. Again, the the the, the names of the app is I Correct. So if you are in preparation for the IELTS speaking but you have no partners think of think of downloading i correct and for the free version you can only have like 12 speaking topics but for the uh, premium version you have around like 78 topics i have just checked it yesterday and that is when why i still remember the numbers okay uh <laughs> i think 
the pictures of the app. Mr. Vũ, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Can 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 I can I share the screen because uh, some people need to see the, the the photos of the the application. Yeah, yeah, sure. You can share the, the screen. I stop sharing. It is a, a mobile app, but um, yeah, I think there could be a kind of logo on the internet. All right, that. Yeah, this one. Everybody, can can you see the um, the browser that I am sharing? Yeah, we say it. Okay, so this application is very useful because they contain a lot of videos showing examiners like talking to you in a, you know, virtual environments. So you can practice with the videos with our partners. Okay. I use it myself a lot. And, and you know, the price is not very high. You need to spend like 100 Twenty thousand Vietnam dong for a month. If you want to have the premium version, and I think it's kind of cheap. If you are in a hurry for the test, yeah. Think about stop drinking two cups of bubble tea and start learning, and you will find one hundred and twenty thousand Vietnam dong not expensive. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Here we have another question. Tips to get an eight point zero in the short term. Uh, <laughs> your old tips. Yeah, Mister Vo, do you have any ideas for that? Yeah, I myself have something uh, for you. Uh, from the very beginning of this webinar, now I only bring you bad news. But uh, please, Mr. Khoa has already mentioned a piece of information that would uh, frustrate you very much. That says you need over 200 hours of guided learning and an approximately uh, fair amount of time of new studying to move from one band score to another. Which means if you have, <coughs> like, if you are now at uh, 5.0 or 6.0 and you need to upgrade your score into an 8.0 then you would need to study for 600 hours of guided learning in like one month or two months which is a short period of time in your in your own ideas which means <clears throat> there is no way to gain uh, a very dramatic improvement in the very short of time if we don't study really hard. It is possible. It is not impossible, but it, it, it will require a lot of effort, you know. Now, if you only have two months in advance of your test and two months every 24 hours a day, so for, like, you have uh, approximately... Uh, uh, 800 hours a month and 1,800, uh, 600 or more hours, two months, you would like, you would need to spend like 700 of that amount of hours to study. If you want mm -hmm. to just calculate, we have the function, we have the, the theories back here, 200 hours of guided learning and some extra 100 hours of sales studying for one band score improvement. So just do the calculation. And the bad news is there is no shortcut. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I need to add in some information, very interesting information. Now, think about why you need a band eight. It's not really that important, right? Instead of showing up your levels of English, Band, uh, band A is not specifically that important, okay? So people always think about having a band A in the, short the shortest time possible because of the advertisement on the internet, right? A lot of people having band A. But to be honest, I have read um, 
statistic data on the official side of IELTS, only around 4% of test takers get around an eight in the test. So it means that in a 100 uh, people room, only four of them get an eight. So that is not something that everybody can uh, do in a very short time, see? So do not be clouded by uh, internet. Bene is neither necessary because not many uh, universities require you to get the Bene. But if you want to seriously get the Bene to advance your career, or I think the only, the only, the only thing uh, that I can think of when you want to get a Bene is to be an IELTS teacher. Okay, I myself took the IELTS five times and I only got eight in the times that I, 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 I took the test. Um, yeah, if you want to be an IELTS teacher, you may want to get a Ben 8 in IELTS. Um, now think about some conditions before you can start getting a eight, an eight in a short period of time. You need to be 7.5 first, okay? Well, if you are, your level right now is already 7.5 or 6.5 in one of the most ex uh, extreme cases, you can get an eight in a short period of time. Okay. Okay, so everyone, I'm sorry because I am going to cut your questions and answers mm. now because we are running out of time. I'm sorry. It's uh, nearly lunch. I know some of you are already hungry because you uh, don't have uh, break. You didn't have breakfast this morning. So, um, like I have some wrapping up uh, information before we leave this um, webinar today. <coughs> So uh, uh, the PowerPoint slides, uh, Mr. Kwa will uh, send me, oh, he has already sent me the PowerPoint slide. So now I'll share with you the link so that you can download the PowerPoint slide for your own reference. Please, I am sending the, uh, sending the, the, here is the link, you can see. You can uh, log into my, that is my uh, personal website. And uh, in the webinar resources, you can find the PowerPoint slide that Mr. Hua used for today's presentation. And further, I would like you to help me, to help us in improving the, um, the quality of the future webinars by help me to, um, helping me to complete a survey. I will only also send you the, the link. Here is the link for the survey. So uh, please, we have our over 30 participants today. Uh, please help us because uh, that is very value, valuable information for us to conduct the future webinars. And uh, we promise that we will base our, our future presentations on your needs. So please help, please. <laughs> I will share the links in the group. I will also share the link on the internet, my Facebook page, uh, on the participants here in this um, con in, in the presentation today will help to spread the news, press the information, so please. <clears throat> and now uh, we are going to meet you, I think maybe next week, at this time next week or in another two weeks. And we are going to have another like um, very interesting uh, webinars with the topic that I think that you might uh, might be very interested in, might be very useful, practical for your teaching situation. So, our uh, everyone, let's say it again. Please help me to uh, complete the survey. Please, if you want the PowerPoint slides, you can. Uh, uh, like use the link that I have already shared with you, and download it from my own personal website. And now Mr. Choir is going to share with you his contact um, so that you can like ask him more questions and like uh, maybe you can ask him for more advice. So uh, Choir, please tie your contact on your PowerPoint slide and share the screen once again so that everyone can have your contact right now. Okay, so uh, 
in case that you have more questions about IELTS, not think about sending me an email via, uh, okay, I'm gonna type in here. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to, tap, to, to um, make a phone call, it's okay. But please do not phone me at midnight. And everyone, I'm also sharing with you the link, the Facebook group of our. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I thought that you you are sending my Facebook link. <laughs> no, no, this is not my Facebook. This is uh, your. This is not your Facebook. This is the Facebook of the group that we use to communicate. So everyone, please uh, send a request into. Uh, or the Facebook group so that I can accept and uh, let you in. We can discuss more, spread the news and talk more. We can like initiate discussions in the future. So I think it's, it's time uh, for us to leave Mr. Kwa with his lunch. Uh, so uh, Mr. Kwa, thank you very much for agreeing to uh, join with us today. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts, your enthusiasm, your also your patience in sharing your ideas, your knowledge, your insight with us. Thank you very much. And everyone, if you have the expertise to share, you would like to be a presenter in our webinar, please contact me privately. I will have you to prepare the content and maybe in in next month, you will be the presenter in next month. We really need your expertise. If you have something to share, you don't need to be an expert. If you have some tips, you have anything about teaching English that you want to share with us, please contact me and we can um, make some appointment. We can talk about the topic. I can help you to build up the content so that we can have a presentation in the future so that we can share everything with each other. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Kwa. I am going to end this meeting now. And see you again. See you. See ya. Goodbye.